Survivor has been making their cast for 22 years now, and for the most part divide their casts up well. However, on rare occasion, you'll have this person you see casted, where you go, Really? Survivor has thousands of applicants? and they picked you. And today, I'll be bashing on five people that in my opinion were straight up on the wrong tribe. Exemplifying this at number five, we have Alicia Holden from Survivor Co. Wrong. Now, I like Alicia as much as the next man, and she did have a fun underdog arc during season 32, but anyone with a pair of eyes could see she was a fish out of water. Let's go through the brawn checklist. Former NBA champion, Bodybuilder, bounty hunter, check, construction contractor, and postal worker who was a former lifeguard. That makes sense. And the most muscle requiring job of them all, a real estate agent. Now I get Alicia was supposed to be a more than meets the eye type of archetypal casting who wasn't stereotypical hardcore brawn, but there's two issues. Firstly, we also had Ty on the Beauty Tribe taking the slot of a wild card pick by representing Inner Beauty, a casting twist that I feel worked a lot better. But secondly, I feel given her profession and looks, Alicia would have been a better fit on both the Brains or Beauty Tribe, and she even describes in excellent interviews, I think I would have gone further on the Beauty Tribe. During the preseason cast breakdown, Jeff himself even admitted, yeah, they really didn't have much idea why they casted her on Braun, and that she would have a hard time winning the game. This is further reciprocated by the Braun tribe, that, on the season, generally didn't know why she was with them, due to her having basically no qualities you'd expect from a Braun. Finally, while I'm aware Alicia had a father who was an influencer in the boxing world, making her used to brawn. I'd rather see an actual boxer or other martial artist on the tribe to represent that form of brawn which was missing on Ko Rong. On the topic of brawn, in number 4 we have Sean Hampson in Champions vs Contenders 2. Now Sean was a pretty bizarre case this season for multiple reasons. Sean, for anyone that doesn't know, is a fairly young man who played 98 games across 12 years in the Australian Football League, but couldn't continue because of back injuries. Yet, with this incredible sporting history, Australian Survivor put him on the Contenders Tribe. Despite being a human behemoth, Sean was a Survivor fan and a good player during the season, even revealing coming up to the show, he felt more comfortable on the Contenders Tribe due to fellow AFL legend Simon Black being on the Champions. Which is all well and good, but I'd rather we just took the AFL player that knew how to play Survivor, plonk him on the Champions Tribe, and say, well it was nice knowing you mate to Simon. It was also odd having Sean on the Contenders Tribe, considering that tribe was already extremely stacked. It contained lots of good challenge performers, further proven by the fact the Contenders Tribe only lost one of the six immunity challenges. Sean being on the champions would have helped a lot in this regard, as well as the fact it would have helped balance out the ages. It was a bit of a running joke on the season that the contenders were people in their prime, while the champions were mostly 40 something year old has beens. In fact, it was so bad, Luke Toki, at the age of 32, was the youngest man and second youngest overall on the champions tribe. Sean, at 31, would have lowered the average age, as well as the powerhouse the tribe desperately needed. The whole aspect of the season was champions battling against contenders, but because of these casting decisions, it looked more like old versus young. On the topic of old versus young, in at number 3 we have Melinda Hyder. In the beginning of Survivor Panama, before Shane was threatening to murder Courtney, there were four tribes with four individuals in each. The young man, young woman, older man, and, shock horror, the older woman tribe. Well, shock horror indeed, because this older woman tribe didn't consist of ladies at call olds. Now I know Survivor will take some liberties on calling a person old, because the average age of a Survivor contestant is lower than that of a person in the real world. 
It's harder for Survivor to get 60 plus year old contestants on the show due to them needing to pass medical for instance. But this is the same show where people in their 40s are calling themselves old ladies. And Panama is no exception where, on the old woman's tribe, we have Melinda being put on it at the unbelievably ancient age of 32. In fact, every woman on this tribe could have been put on this video with the oldest woman on the old woman tribe consisting of the universally renowned prehistoric age of 48. Is this just a massive conspiracy theory to everyone like myself outside of America that the average lifespan over there is about 30? And to anyone saying I'm overreacting, the younger female's tribe oldest woman was Courtney, 31, that's one year older than Melinda. And, as one of my commenters wrote, Melinda was three months older than Bobby and somehow ended up on the older woman tribe while Bobby was a younger man. Crying emoji, crying emoji, crying emoji. I could go on forever about how absurd it was to put a 32 year old on the old woman's tribe, but it's a ridiculous casting decision where this tribe should have had women, at least in their mid 40s, at the absolute youngest. Regarding absolutes, next we're talking about Australian survivor Brains vs Brawn. Now, right off the bat, this season was a pretty bizarre one, with half the cast getting an edit so bare it made Chelsea Townsend look overexposed by comparison. Add on top of that some of the worst twists the franchise had seen, like this abomination, and you should already be sceptical. But at number 2, on the Brains vs Brawn's cast, we have Baden Cook an ex-pro cyclist who raced professionally between 2000 and 2013, finishing third in the Commonwealth Games, competed in the Tour de France, won the Herald Sun Tour, and was on the Brains Tribe. Now, I'm Northern Irish, a foreigner to Australia, but unless you operate bicycles with telekinesis down under there, there is absolutely no justification for this. While I'm sure being a pro cyclist requires some brains to an extent, it's one of the most obvious professions for ever being a brawn. And while nowadays Baden is a businessman, he was advertised on the show as his career being a pro cyclist. When you compare him to other occupations on his tribe, like a pain researcher or a political operative, he sticks out like a sore thumb. And that pretty much sums up his experience on the OG Brains tribe as he clearly didn't gel with the others and as a result was on the outer but the fact Baden had a professional occupation requiring extensive physical training only for him to end up on the Brains had to land him in at number 2. But now, at number 1, finally it's been months, I get to roast Candice. Candice? should not have been on the Heroes Tribe. But thanks for watching this video, I hope you all enjoyed it, I'm only kidding. The final individual we'll be discussing is Candace, who appeared as a hero on season 20. In spite of Heroes vs Villains being one of the best Survivor seasons ever, it did have some unusual casting choices. Like, when I think of Sugar in Gabon, Hero is probably one of the last words I'd use to describe her, but hey, if I'm in an optimistic mood, and if I squint my eyes hard enough, the producer's rationale of her trying to get the perceived good people to the end works. I'll give Jeff credit, he desperately tried to construct a narrative against the odds for why Candace was a hero in his pre-season cast assessment, which revolved around the fact Candace was the only person to accept the mutiny ever on Survivor. No one had done it before or after her. Except Penner who did it literally two seconds later, but psh, specifics. But the concept of a mutiny is to abandon your tribe and be selfish because you're causing them to be a player down in a game all about numbers. Not to mention, Candace practically had her entire boot episode calling Jonathan names like a disgusting rat. And the worst crime of them all, ugh, it makes me sick thinking about it. She rejected Billy Garcia for Adam. But on Heroes vs Villains, you could clearly tell Candace was a bit of an outsider on her tribe and further showed her villainous desires by flipping immediately to the villains after the merge vote. But the cherry on top is that Candace herself even stated being a hero is kinda cheesy. 
Now, there is a popular theory in the community that production originally had Parvati and Candace on different tribes, but swapped them because with Parvati as a hero, it would make the heroes have four Micronesia contestants. But I'm sure with a little bit of cast reorganization, they could have made it so Candace, in my opinion, wasn't on the wrong tribe. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, I really do appreciate it. A video should have popped up now, talking about the most questionable Survivor returnees. A video similar to this, where I make fun of Survivor contestants. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because it means a lot as a small channel. But nonetheless, have a great day, and peace!